Come on, Jen, hurry up. You're moving too slow. What are you getting old? My butt looks good. Uh, your butt looks. <laughs> your butt looks fine. Let me go grab the refrigerated stuff. I got the cold stuff, so all the vaccines are in this bucket. So just so you know, tomorrow we have 58 pronghorn to process, 24 fawns, and um, we've got 33 targets potentially in the morning. So that will be, we need enough um, halperidol and midazolam for all the targets. And then we need to have enough animal processing drugs, the vitamins, the dewormer, the vaccines, the anti-inflammatories, all the things that we give them for up to 58 animals. So that's what we got to drop tonight. So let's get started. The story of the snoring pronghorn is amazing. It's been, um, they, they were first listed as endangered in 1967. And we enjoyed a great population of these guys until 2002 where we had this, you know, the United States anyway, had this population pretty steady around 120, 130 animals. It, we, we had this horrific drought in 2002 and that, those animals, just so you guys know, dropped to under 20 animals. And you can't breed yourself out of extinction with 20 animals. There's no way they're gonna make it. So we decided we're gonna start breeding these guys. We're gonna start getting them to a, um, a number that, that could be self-sustained. The only way we could do that is actually go in the pronghorn business we built a pen, a predator-proof pen, and we started putting pronghorn in there to breed. And we made baby pronghorn for a living. <laughs> I think that this is, next to the peregrine falcon, one of the most successful, in my mind, most successful endangered species recovery programs that has ever occurred. Because we took less than 20 pronghorn to over 300 pronghorn. And in fact, this year, we're taking pronghorn back down south to Mexico to be released um, because they lend us so many pronghorn to get us started on this. So it's, to me, it's, it's, a, um, it's just a giant success story. And here we are sitting in a little crappy hotel in Ajo, Arizona, getting ready to make more pronghorn go home or repopulate the United States population of pronghorn. That's why I keep coming back. North Beaumont, where we're going to start today. And so you want to carpool as much as possible just to minimize traffic. I think there's probably nothing more beautiful than an Arizona sunrise. We're going to maybe get some weather in which will be good because when we're capturing uh, animals, it's best if we do it on cool, cloudy days. These animals heat up, they got hollow hair. Um, trying to keep their temperatures under control is paramount in, uh, in, in, in the success of handling pronghorn. And, and right now, um, we've got a nice cloudy morning and an absolutely beautiful sunrise. One of the most important things to consider is which hat to wear, because I wear a lot of different hats all the time. I don't know if I should wear that hat. Or this hat. Maybe I should wear this hat today. Or that hat. Or this hat. I, I'm just really confused. I'm, I'm going to try to wear I don't know. It's going to be a sunny day. I think I'll wear this hat today. Time to put on the hat. Get this game on. Are we ready? We are ready.
Oh, stop, girlfriend. All right, in the stretcher she goes. Turn around. Lift her head up just a bit. Thanks. Uh, you, you got that one, Jill. We need a collar on this one. So we're holding. It's not going anywhere. Pretty historic moment. This is the first dough process that's going to be heading back to Mexico. So they're going back to the, the motherland, you might say. One down, five to go. Mexico, here we go. Oh, we got a, <clears throat> she lacerated herself right up at her flank um, in the process of being captured. And so we're gonna scrub it up. Um, she was slated to go to uh, Vico Valley, but because of the laceration and the trailer ride, we just don't want to chance it. So we're gonna just suture and turn her back in the pen today. And do the funky chicken. Yep. A little bit, a little bit of a funky chicken. Sometimes when they get a fresh collar and we let them go like that, they go crazy because they think it's a predator around their neck. So they jump around and fight it, and then they go, "Oh, I'm free! Run!" <laughs> He doesn't have a vein on this side. <laughs> we go over the, the bloodier side. We just get this kind of soaked into her. This way you won't get ticks. Okay, we'll splash her with some water and then we're done. I'm done with her. Does anyone else need anything else? Data recorded, we have everything. <laughs> well, the truck is off to Mexico, six pronghorn going home, a veterinarian chasing them. Hopefully the vet will catch up to the pronghorn. Hopefully there won't be a problem where we need a veterinarian. So. Buena suerte, my friends. So we're taking these guys to the Vico Valley on the east uh, side of uh, Gila Bend. And what's really unique, this is the farthest east we've actually created a population. And I find it amazing. I think we're talking now seven or eight different isolated populations of Sonoran pronghorn which is really important because if we have just one big population, a disastrous event like a drought or a disease process could completely wipe out, you know, at this point, almost 20 years of effort to recover this species. So the Vico Valley is, is, our, is our new destination with these guys. So they are gonna start a brand new population in historic ranges of the, of the Sonoran pronghorn. And for that reason, I'm pretty darn excited about it. So the success of the Sonoran pronghorn recovery effort here in the United States was predicated on the fact that we cooperated with the country of Mexico to um, bring pronghorn over here to start this breeding program and 17 years later we tried to give these pronghorn back to Mexico and uh, what happened because apparently you guys don't want them anymore. <laughs> they were I would say this close, <laughs> this close from getting back but uh, you know it's hard to work uh, with Mexico regulations from the government uh, 
you know, I don't know, 20 years ago it was probably easier. Now these days bureaucracy is a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really, there's no other word. And they got one of the premises that was missing was just the issue about the tax departments, the regulations. That and one? That held yeah, it all up? Yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah no, not the diseases, not something that was really important. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Because they even not, you know, this is a donation. They are not even, no one is commercializing them. Yeah. So why? Can't, why, why, why do you need a, tax, a like tax document? You know, it's like, no, Man. because well, this is the regulation and then you have to do this and that and it takes 72 hours and we can't hold the animals over there. So. Well, don't worry. We'll pay you back an interest for next year then. <laughs> but we'll get those pronghorn <laughs> back so. to Mexico soon Thanks enough. So I am aware you, you tried. <laughs> there you go. Now you're thinking. Now you're thinking. It wasn't all bad because we did translocate these uh, pronghorn that were supposed to go to Mexico back into another population in Arizona. So I, I guess it all works out in the long run, but the, the, the end result is we can't give away pronghorn to Mexico anymore. So one of the best things, Jill, remember, Ouch. <laughs> is that we always have this tradition at Pronghorn where we have grouper tacos. The best fish tacos in the world. Are you excited? Yeah, you got out easy tonight. Last year you were slicing and dicing. It's all ready. Yeah, I didn't have to, because I was on the release, I didn't even have to prep. So I just get to eat. This is awesome. Let's go. Work hard, play harder. Yep, I like it. <laughs> And that's what I learned there. Colombia has more birds than any other country in the world, including Brazil. Well, that's a fact we don't hear every day. A fact you don't hear much. <laughs> Best part about pronghorn work? Is the food. Is the food. Well, and doing good things for pronghorn, so we're good. Oh, you dead. <laughs> Well, here we are, day two. Got maybe maybe another 30 pronghorn to process. These are going to be translocated to the Marine Range near Yuma. It's a beautiful Sonora Desert morning. Sunrise is awesome. Temperatures are perfect. Let's get to work. Hardest haircut I've ever done. Whoa! Oh! Whoa! That's how I look at it, Aaron. I dig it. <laughs> Let her go. Look, you got a brand new collar. Brand new necklace. Not, e not even Valentine's Day yet. Oh, run away. Run away. All right, well, so this concludes the Cabeza 2021 capture effort. We got all our targets. We are creating a new population, new herd, um, the farthest east we've ever taken them so far. Uh, we're taking pronghorn from this particular capture to the farthest west location that we have pronghorn. So we're really kind of uh, splitting the compass in all different directions. We had zero human morbidity or mortality. We had zero pronghorn morbidity and mortality and that is always the goal and, and, and a real bonus. So you know handling pronghorn is very difficult, probably the most difficult ungulate species in the United States to handle and we did it expertly 
and we did professionally, and we did it with a little bit of fun involved too. So uh, we're going to see that population continue to grow due to the fine efforts of all these people involved, all the agencies involved, and all the people involved. And I'm really happy to be able to work with a, a great group like um, the folks I've been working with for the last couple of days.